And the suggestion that anybody in my team, whether the Secretary of State, our UN ambassador, anybody on my team would play politics or mislead when we've lost four of our own governor is offensive. That's not what we do. That's not what I do as president. That's not what I do as commander in chief. A Libyan government official is telling us that uh, the building has been secured by the Libyan military, but according to this eyewitness, uh, members of the group uh, had stormed uh, the consulate building and taken over the building and were celebrating uh, and looting the consulate. Uh, Libyan security forces were engaged in heavy clashes uh, with members of an armed group that is Ansar al Sharia, that is a radical militant group that is based in eastern Libya. Uh, a diplomatic security agent working in the Tactical Operations Center, immediately activated the imminent danger notification system. He also alerted the quick reaction security team stationed nearby. The Libyan 17th February Brigade, the Embassy in Tripoli, and the Diplomatic Security Command Center in Washington. Other than the fact that he was the American envoy to the Libyan opposition during the revolution in that country, which certainly does suggest that you now have a situation where the rebels are killing their own counterpart. And Ms. Lamb, I, I read through your testimony, it had to be horrible to sit there and watch it in real time what was going on. So hearing of demonstrations being planned in Tunis, the capital city of Tunisia. Both of these will be anti-American demonstrations, again showing just how volatile this region is, particularly in these post-revolution climate that has seen these countries in, a, an, in an instability, largely because of what has happened and a lot of confusion over the role of Western powers in the so-called revolutionary process. Since the 9-11 attacks, Al-Qaeda has frequently timed statements and provocations, if not actual new attacks, to coincide with the yearly 9-11 anniversaries. Now, um, as a former law enforcement officer, I recognize there are certain dates that law enforcement across our great na nation prepare for, because we believe they are significant to certain groups, one of which is September 11th, and it is significant to which group, Ms. Lamb? Which group would make that significant? I'm not sure I'm following you. Which terrorist group finds September 11th significant? I'm sure all terrorist groups would find But mostly Al-Qaeda. Would you not agree? Yes or no? If you don't agree, say you don't agree. Yesterday, four of these extraordinary Americans were killed in an attack on our diplomatic post in Benghazi. This outrageous and shocking attack. The killers who attacked our people. We reject all efforts to denigrate the religious beliefs of others. Type of senseless violence. To unequivocally reject these brutal acts. This attack in Benghazi. For this terrible act, you saw that following the incidents in response to this video, this is a fairly volatile situation, and it is in response not to United States policy, uh, not to, obviously, the administration, not to the American people. It is in response to a video. Largely because of what has happened and a lot of confusion over the role of Western powers in the so-called revolutionary process. That the anniversary of 9-11 would be a time that you would want to have extra security around diplomats and military posts? Well, as you know, there, we uh, are very vigilant around uh, anniversaries like 9-11. The president is always uh, briefed and brought up to speed on all the uh, precautions being taken. But let's Same be clear. But, 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 being but, very vigilant are different things. Jake, let's be clear. This, these protests were in reaction to a video uh, as we deal with the response to this video, which the cause of the unrest was a video. The reason why there is unrest is because of the film. This is in response to the film. Uh, we have made clear to leaders in the region uh, that they need to make clear that it is not an acceptable reaction to a film. At, in terms of policy, we continue to make clear that in this case, 
we find the video reprehensible and disgusting. And it sounds like, Margaret, they're working some of the back channels here. Give us a sense for what Secretary Clinton, whom you've been in touch with, is doing behind the scenes. She has been in the White House and in the in the Situation Room about six times in the past three days. They're in constant contact via video conference, General Dempsey with Defense Secretary Panetta. And you believe that this was the work of Al-Qaeda, and you believe that it was led by foreigners. Is that is that what you're telling us? It was planned, definitely it was planned by foreigners. What our assessment is as of the present is in fact what it began spontaneously in Benghazi uh, as a reaction to what had transpired some hours earlier in Cairo. The best information and the best assessment we have today is that in fact this was not a pre-planned, premeditated uh, attack. All I can tell you is based on the information we had at the time, uh, we have now, we do not yet have uh, indication that it was pre-planned or premeditated. Why did Ambassador Rice give the American people bad information? Well, I think as you heard Ambassador Rice say, the best information that we had at the point in which she gave that answer is the answer that she gave. And look, I would say this, as we have learned more and, and as this investigation continues, I anticipate we will continue to lear learn more facts. There's a crude and disgusting video sparked outrage throughout the Muslim world. Now, I have made it clear that the United States government had nothing to do with this video. We understand why people take offense to this video. There's no video that justifies an attack on an embassy. The future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam. What we found out today from senior law enforcement officials is that while the FBI has finally made it to Tripoli, they've never made it to Benghazi. They haven't and been on the ground in Benghazi. They have not. The attack that killed American Ambassador Chris Stevens and three colleagues in Benghazi was first described by U.S. officials as an eruption of anger at an anti-Islam film. The Obama administration has since reversed that appraisal and now calls it a well-coordinated terrorist attack. I think it's interesting the president just said something which, which is that on the day after the attack he went to the Rose Garden and said that this was an act of terror. You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. It was not a spontaneous demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Please proceed, Governor. I, I, I want to make sure we get that for the record, because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. And the suggestion that anybody in my team, whether the Secretary of State, our UN ambassador, anybody on my team would play politics or mislead when we've lost four of our own governor is offensive. I'll do that one more time. For an anti-Muslim video. Video, a video, a film, a video into a video, in reaction to a video, so this video, a video, this video was a video is because of the film. This is in response to the fi a film, the film, video. Video. All I can tell you is based on the information we had at the time, uh, we have now, we do not ha yet have uh, indication that it was pre-planned or premeditated. But I specifically, last Sunday, asked Ambassador Rice about the president of Libya. I specifically asked her about Al-Qaeda. Ms. Rice didn't say, we don't know, I'll get back to you. She said it was a spontaneous attack, not pre-planned, that spun out of control. And disgusting video, this video, this video, there's no video, this video.